Hey guys, let's get straight into today's video. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about what framework, plugins, and software I use to run my own dropshipping business and websites. If you're confused about where to start or what you'll need to run your own website, then keep watching. So here's the list. As you can see, there's a lot on here, which I know can be intimidating, but don't worry, I'm gonna take you through each one quickly and explain what it is and why I use it. Before I do though, I want to explain the icons that I have used for each item. If it has a tick, that means it's a necessary item. If it has a dollar icon, that means the plugin or service has a cost associated with it. If the item doesn't have an icon, it means it's an optional plugin. First up is WordPress. This is what's called a CMS, which stands for a content management system. And this will basically be what runs your website. Next up is WooCommerce. This is the e-commerce plugin that runs on WordPress. This is what will allow you to operate your website as an online shop. Elementor is a plugin that will help you design professional looking web pages and elements for your site. It's like a drag and drop editor. There's a free version or a paid version and I use the free version. WooCommerce PayPal Checkout Gateway. This will allow you to accept PayPal payments on your website. I really recommend PayPal because in my experience, it's much more seller friendly. Then we have WooCommerce Stripe Gateway. This will allow you to accept payments via credit card through the provider called Stripe. I'm sure you've heard of them. Now this next one, I can't recommend highly enough. It's Mouseflow. This plugin is absolute magic. It allows you to record user sessions so that you can play them back and watch exactly what your visitors are doing on your website. I can't even tell you how many times I've picked up on mistakes with my product pages using this service. It is a paid service, but in my opinion, it's worth every cent. So I definitely recommend that you guys check this out. Also, you can check the description below for my video about Mouseflow where I go through everything you need to know about this service, how it works, and also give you a bit of a demonstration. eProlo Dropshipping. This is a plugin from one of my suppliers I use. I use this plugin to import products from eProlo and it helps me fulfill orders with just a click of a button. Check the description for a link to my video about eProlo and how it works. The good thing about eProlo is it has much faster shipping times when compared to AliExpress, so it's definitely worth checking out. CTX Feed. This plugin uploads your product data into your Google Shopping setup. It's great because it's all automatic and you don't have to add each product separately. I've set mine to update my Google Shopping data daily. Check below for my Google Shopping Ads video. WooCommerce Conversion Tracking. This plugin will help you track the conversions that you generate through your Google Ads. It also pushes the order value to Google Ads so that you can optimize your campaigns accurately. Variation Swatches for WooCommerce. This plugin helps with making product variations look clean and professional. It allows you to use color swatches, drop downs, and labels depending on what you need. I definitely recommend this because it'll make your life so much easier. All right guys, we're getting through them, but it's taking a while, so I'm gonna speed things up by blitzing through the rest of them. And next up, we have WooCommerce TM Extra Product Options. This plugin also helps with product variations in a similar way to the previous, but I use this one for custom fields. So for example, if you were selling something like a dog tag that needed an inscription, this plugin allows the customer to input what they would like on that inscription via an input text field. WooCommerce Multi-Currency. This is the best currency conversion plugin I have used. You can ignore this if you're only selling to one country, but if you're selling worldwide, this is the plugin to get. You have to buy it, but it's worth it and you can claim it as a business expense. Checkout Field Editor for WooCommerce. This allows you to edit the checkout page fields. You can change the order of the fields, the labels, whatever you want really. I use this to make the email address the first field on the checkout page. Abandoned Cart Light for WooCommerce. So this kind of ties in with the previous one. This plugin will track when a customer abandons their cart and will email them a reminder to complete their transaction. However, in order for this to happen, the customer needs to have entered their email address on the checkout page. This is why I have made the email address field the first field in the checkout process using the previous plugin. 
So this one here is a great plugin for managing product variations. It's especially useful if you have products with a lot of variations. You can change variation images, prices, and more, all on one page. WPC Fly Cart for WooCommerce, this plugin is awesome. Have you ever added something to your cart on a website and then the page reloads and a cart area animates in from the side of the screen? This is exactly what this plugin does. This plugin allows you to create different gift rules for different products. For example, if the customer buys a pair of shoes, they'll also get a free pair of socks as an incentive. This helps boost conversions. Country-based restrictions for WooCommerce. This plugin allows you to limit which countries a product is sold in. So for example, you could have a product that's available in Australia, but not in the United States. Contact Form 7, a great contact form plugin, perfect for contact us pages. Yoast SEO, I use this all the time for my product page SEO titles and descriptions. Auto optimize or or top optimize, I don't even know how to pronounce that, but it helps to boost website load speed by minimizing CSS, JavaScript, and other stuff. Asset Cleanup Page Speed Booster allows you to prevent certain scripts from loading on any particular web page or product page. For example, you could have two plugins that do similar things and you could disable one of them if it's not needed for that page. WPS Hide Login, a security plugin which changes the URL of your admin login page. It helps to prevent bots or people trying to get into your backend. This one's just a plugin that ensures emails are delivered properly, so things like new order emails, order completed emails, you get the idea. WP Add Custom CSS, I love this one. Allows you to add custom CSS to any page, including product pages. WooCommerce Order Test. This allows you to place test orders on your website. Use a role editor. This is good for when you have staff helping you out with managing your store. You can control which parts of the backend they can see and edit. This one's pretty self-explanatory. You can create redirects using this plugin. Preloader Plus. I like using this plugin because it shows a loading screen before the page is fully displayed. It just lets the customer know that things are loading, which helps with retention as they're not staring at a blank screen wondering what's going on. Post Types Order allows you to sort your products in any order that you want. And this is reflected in both the front end and the back end of the site. Pop Up Maker, an awesome plugin for making pop ups. Insert Pages, this one is a bit more advanced and you probably won't need it. It basically allows you to create short codes and pull in HTML or PHP pages from your server, which then get displayed wherever the short code is placed. Hurry Timer, this is a useful plugin for displaying a countdown timer on your product page. This helps to create urgency with the customer so that they're more likely to buy then and there. Flamingo is a plugin that creates an area in the backend for all of your contact inquiries to be stored. Enable Media Replace. Easily replace existing images with new ones. So it's very useful if you need to update an image somewhere. Duplicate Page. This one's pretty simple. It just allows you to duplicate pages or products in the backend. Dashboard Widget Suite is a handy plugin which allows you to create notes on your dashboard. I use the notes to put supplier links to the products I sell allowing me to easily access all of my supplier products from the dashboard. So beaconing for WooCommerce, uh, this creates little notifications in the bottom left of my website showing all the products that have recently been purchased. They pop up every now and then and make the website seem more alive and active, which in turn helps with building trust and more conversions. Magical Chrome extension is a super convenient little extension which allows you to create keyboard shortcuts with whatever text you want to display so that you don't have to type out the same thing over and over again. I use this when placing orders with suppliers. I use it in the comments section to inform the supplier that I am dropshipping and that I need the product delivered as quickly as possible. Ali Dropship Chrome extension is a great extension for AliExpress. It allows me to generate invoices for all the orders that I've made. It's perfect for bookkeeping. So there you have it. It's pretty much everything I use to run my websites. So now you can use this list to create your own store. Obviously, this list is pretty specific to WooCommerce. Uh, I've noticed in the community that a lot of you are using Shopify, which is also a great platform. Um, but this advice that I've given today is specific to WooCommerce. However, I will be uh, opening my own Shopify store soon. So once I do that, I will make sure to create some videos for you guys. Uh, for those of you who are using Shopify, 
um, I'm creating some videos around how to use that platform and uh, how to create a store with that. Each platform has its own benefits, uh, with WooCommerce being a lot more flexible if you have web development experience. And Shopify tends to be better for those who are beginners uh, just starting out. In episode three, I'm gonna show you guys how to source products that will actually sell. Uh, now, I won't give this information right now, but I will leave you with a bit of a teaser. So number one is uh, Google's Merchant Center. There's a best sellers list in there, which basically um, gives you all the trending products right now from each category. Uh, the second thing I would suggest is uh, Google Trends. So Google Trends is a great way to look up keywords to see how uh, popular they are right now. So if you find a product, you can go to Google Trends, um, enter in the keywords and just see if it's a viable product. Third, I would suggest Facebook, Instagram and TikTok ads. Uh, now, I won't go into detail about these three points right now. That'll be for episode three. So make sure you are subscribed uh, and click the little bell icon so you get notified when I release that. It's gonna be very, very informative for you guys and I suggest that you watch that when it comes out. Oh, and while we're on the topic of talking about how to source products, um, I have a handy tip for you guys that you can use whenever you're out and about. So what I do is when I enter a store, if I'm shopping for something or just, you know, out and I see an interesting shop, I'll walk in and I will go up to the store attendant and I will literally ask them, I'll be like, hey, a uh, random question for you. Uh, can you tell me what some of your best selling stuff right now? And in most cases, well, from what I've experienced, they will tell you, they will tell you what's selling. Um, and so you just you know, keep it up here, go home, do a bit of research for yourself and see if any of those ideas would work for your own store. Um, and that's what I do all the time. And I have found several products that have sold really well just by asking. So while this channel is still young and fresh and while I have the time, um, I found a really good place on Discord where I'll be uh, chatting to people like myself um, and with other drop shippers. So if you want to join the conversation, come talk to me, ask me questions. Um, you can obviously leave comments down below, but you can also join me on Discord. I will leave the link to that server down below in the description. Um, and who knows, I might be chatting to you soon on Discord. Anyway, guys, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in episode three. As always, guys, if you've enjoyed today's video, if you've learned something new, uh, if you wanna keep watching, then please consider subscribing to my channel, liking this video and giving it a quick comment. Um, it'll help me gain traction with this video to reach a wider audience and help more people with my free content. So thanks a lot and see you soon.